Hey there, buddy. It's Caitlin, your geeky girlfriend, and in tonight's video, we are going to do a um, book review for my Bookie Babe book review series. And um, this one is another nonfiction title, so if you've been a member of the channel for a while, you've seen a lot of book reviews, and I kind of go back and forth between fiction and nonfiction. Um, so this one tonight is a nonfiction title, and it's one that I was really, really excited about. Um, this one was highly recommended on Pinterest and different blogs, um, and I had heard really good things about it. This is my first review of 2023, but it is not the first book that I've read in 2023. Unfortunately, I have yet to finish a book in 2023. So um, my next review will count as my first review or my first read book of 2023. Um, and a new year means a new reading goal. My reading goal this year is 15 books. That's three more than last year. And since I've really rediscovered my love for reading, I'm pretty confident that I can do it. But um, I ended up in 2022 with 13 books and this one that this review is about was number 13. So um, I did surpass my goal last year and um, hopefully going to do it again. So before we get into this video, I just want to remind you that if you're new here, you can sub subscribe to this channel, hit that red button. Um, and let me know in the comments if there are any books that you want me to read. Um, I will read anything and I will give it an honest review. So let me know in those comments. If you are new to the channel and you're a reader, you can search any of my videos by um, the code name or like first part of the title, Bookie Babe. That's what I have labeled all of my book reviews. So just type in Bookie Babe and they should all come up for you. Um, and I have several titles here in this channel. So let's go ahead and get into the review. Tonight I'm going to be reviewing the book Real Food for Pregnancy and I will put a disclaimer at the beginning of this video. No, I am not pregnant, but I am currently trying to conceive. And a lot of the tips in here are applicable to not only pregnant women, but postpartum and women who are trying to conceive or just trying to <clears throat> create a healthier lifestyle. So even if you are not even trying to conceive, but you have a child and you want to kind of make a change for your health and your lifestyle and your family's health, this book has a lot of information. I'm going to talk about each section a little bit in this review. I'm going to try not to go too in depth, but this is a very, this is a scientific book. It's written very similar to like a scientific journal. So this is not light reading. This is not something that you can just pick up and read like in a day or two. Now you can piece through and read different sections um, as they apply to you. But when I was looking for <clears throat> nutritional advice and sort of lifestyle change advice in particular regarding conception, fertility, pregnancy, um, I will go ahead and be very open and vulnerable here. Um, my husband and I, like I mentioned, are trying to conceive, but it's not coming as easily for us as it's come for some other people. Um, and we're trying different things. And one of those that we're going to try is nutrition and lifestyle changes. Um, I used to be a pretty healthy eater until I had my kidney stone in 2021. And that kind of put me on a setback um, because there were a lot of foods that I was told that I had to limit or had to kind of cut back on because of the type of kidney stone that I had. So I kind of got away from healthy eating, started a couple of months ago kind of reintroducing some healthier foods. And now I'm going to kind of combine everything, like a balance of everything. Um, and I'm going to talk more about that based on the recommendations from this book. But um, conception is not coming as easily for us as we would hope and pray, but we are praying about it and we're trying different things. Um, so I have been seeking out resources on Pinterest, articles, Google, um, about just different ways to naturally help conception. We have not um, sought medical attention yet because everything that I have read says that we haven't been trying long enough due to our age. Um, I'm only 27, he's 30. So we're still in that age range where you know, six months to a year is pretty typical. Um, it's just hard for us to see peers and colleagues and even acquaintances that are seemingly having an easier time. So I want to put this video out as a resource and say that if anybody else out there is watching this video and is going through the same thing, um, you can reach out to me on Instagram at your girlfriend and share a private message with me because um, you're not alone. And I want everybody to know that that Sometimes you do have to make changes and um, 
kind of set your body up for success. If it's Yes, it is something that it's naturally able and capable of doing, but sometimes you have to help it out a little bit. So in my reading and research of different natural ways to conceive and natural fertility remedies, um, I stumbled upon a lot of articles when I was looking at foods for implantation and foods to help conception, best foods for fertility, foods to enhance fertility, and all these different things based on nutrition. Um, this book came up in a lot of different blogs and a lot of people had read this book and raved about it. You know, this is a must read book for everybody trying to conceive or in pregnancy. So again, I'm gonna say this is not just for people trying to conceive. This is not just for pregnant people. This is for anybody who has children, wants to make changes, postpartum. Um, there are a lot of techniques and strategies in here. Again, I say it is a very scientific read, so don't think that it's gonna be super light reading. I will say I took a nutrition course in college and this book was easier to understand than that college nutrition course. Um, and I think the author does a really good job of making it easy to understand and kind of laying it out very bluntly and point blank. Um, also, that being said, she, the author is Lily Nichols, um, registered dietitian and um, best-selling author of Real Food for Gestational Diabetes. So there is a separate book, a companion book to this one, all about um, gestational diabetes, and that's where she got her start, and she kind of talks about that in the introduction. Um, some other things that she talked, I have written an entire like 60 page outline on this book. That was um, a little bit nerdy. Um, I took like tons of highlighted notes throughout and then I kind of summarized them into an outline. Um, so she breaks it down into what foods are good for pregnancy, what foods are not so good for pregnancy, um, and kind of debunks some of the myths that are out there about, oh, pregnant woman can't eat seafood, pregnant woman can't do this, do that. Um, and she kind of debunks all of that and explains why that's a myth and how you can combat the myth with whole food and just good nutrition and a balanced diet. Um, she starts off by explaining the my plate method and why it was adapted versus the food pyramid, which a lot of people I feel like know what the my plate method is, but she does a good job of explaining it and um, setting up kind of the nutritional guidelines. Um, what's interesting about this book and something that I really like is there's not a heavy emphasis on calories or you must eat this many calories a day. I know when people think of weight loss and nutrition, they think, oh, I have to restrict my calories or I have to, you know, eat a certain number of calories to maintain a weight. And she does not take that approach in this book. She very wholeheartedly respects that everybody is different and that every pregnancy is different. Some people are going to have cravings and aversions. Some people won't. And so that will all affect your weight gain and loss. There is a whole section, a whole chap um, a whole section in a chapter in the book about weight gain and loss. There is a small little chart listed if you are interested in how much weight gain is healthy, but she kind of just says talk to your doctor and as long as you're not having any underlying health concerns like high blood high blood pressure or high blood sugar, then the weight gain really is a supplemental factor. She also talks about things like exercise, stress and mental health strategies that you can try, coping strategies. Um, but the biggest thing for me was all of the different nutritional deficits and how common they are, but also how they affect the fetus in utero. Like if you are deficient in your B vitamins, it could lead to this myriad of things. And she spells out all of those. And I don't think that that is the kind of stuff that's talked about a lot. I will not um, rehash everything for you. If you have specific questions, you can drop them in the comments of this video because there's so much and I don't have my outline available. I'm not gonna summarize my whole 60 page outlet for you guys. That would be an extremely long video. So my goal for this video is just to give an overall review of the book, what I liked about it and what I didn't like about it. If you have specific questions, I'd be more than happy to share the recommendations in the book with you, or you can pick up a copy for yourself. I did order it off of Amazon. Um, it The price on here is $29.95. I'm pretty sure you can find it at like your uh, major retail stores as well, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million. Um, but I got it on Amazon. It came like the next day and I'm pretty sure I paid $29.95. Um, but it was worth it. I definitely feel like I learned a lot from it. Learned a lot about where to find different food sources. Um, and it just was a very cut and dry, you know, here's everything that you've learned about nutrition and especially nutrition during pregnancy and you might want to change how you're thinking a little bit. 
Um, the emphasis in the book, for those of you that are curious, is mostly on fruits and vegetables, but vegetables in particular, um, less fruits because fruits do have a lot of sugar and sugar obviously has adverse effects. Even though it's healthy, naturally occurring sugar, sugar still is a, is a bad guy when it comes to nutrition. So the emphasis is on vegetables. Um, and then the a strong, strong emphasis on protein, particularly organ meats and um, like liver, um, pork rinds, chicken skin, naturally occurring fat sources. And the other section that was really shocking to me was the section on omega-3 versus omega-6 fats. Um, omega-6 fats are your typical vegetable oils, canola oil, stuff like that. And those can cause like if there are in excess of those, which those are considered by conventional nutrition guidelines, a healthy fat. Those and omega-3s, those are your monosaturated um, and I think polysaturated fats. And then your trans fats still are a no-go and your, um, your saturated fats. So your saturated and your trans fats are still the ones you wanna try and shy away from, but your poly and monosaturated um, or the poly and monounsaturated, excuse me, those are your omega-3s, your omega-6s, and those healthy fats, like your avocado oil, coconut oil, stuff like that. And there's a whole section on the book on why you should change your ratio to have more omega-3s than omega-6s because of this slew of developmental delays and neural um, deficits and weaknesses that can happen. Obviously, nothing is for sure. You know, it's not 100% that if you don't consume enough omega-3 fatty acids, you're baby or your fetus is not going to develop properly. It's not a 100% sure thing. It's just kind of a, hey, this is some information that you might want to know and you might want to make some changes about. The author is very gracious and tells the reader multiple times, like, you're not going to make all of these changes overnight. You're still going to want to have carbs every once in a while. You're still going to want to have that microwave popcorn every once in a while. So she is very much, and she reiterates several times throughout the book, like, that's okay just reset when you can and try your best to keep these things in mind. It's not your baby will fail if you don't do this. She re repeats that over and over again that women with really poor nutrition can still have healthy babies and the babies can grow up and be just fine. It's just kind of a, hey, here's what some research shows. If you are interested, you might wanna change your diet a little bit. So overall, I felt this book was super informative. It was a lot of information, but it was um, very well presented, very factual. And all of the information, like all of the research is included in the back of the book, in the appendix, all of her cliff, her notes, her citations, everything. Um, and it's very thorough. And she cites a lot of different authors, cites a lot of different studies. And obviously, for everything that this book says, you're going to find another book that discredits it. It's all about how, what information you want to believe and where you're gonna get your information. This information is from a credible source, so you can count it as factual. Other sites or other articles are just word of the, you know, word on the street, and it's up to you as a reader to make that informed decision. Um, books are great because they provide us with lots of information whenever we need it. So this is just one source. I felt it was a really good one. I myself am gonna make those changes that she recommends. Um, with you know tweaks as I see fit or things that I know that my body needs more of, for example, um, like because of my diet does not consist a lot of dairy and calcium, so I might need to supplement even though she recommends getting your nutrition from whole foods. So you just have to know your body, talk with your medical provider, but if you are looking for a starting point for health, nutrition, and wellness, and a good, um, even if you want postpartum care, um, breastfeeding nutrition tips, all of that is included in here. Um, exercise, what's okay and what's not okay in your postpartum recovery, um, and just a good basis for nutrition. This is a good place to start. Like I said, this is applicable for everyone. Um, and no matter where in the pregnancy journey you are, this is just a great book and it's a great resource. And I am definitely going to be referring to my outline and these notes for a long time. So that is my review of Real Food for Pregnancy. I would say, you know, on my typical rating scale, I rate everything in this section of the channel out of a 10. <clears throat> and I would give this one a 10 out of 10. I really liked it. I was really excited about it and it delivered and it hit the expectation that I wanted it to. Yes, some of it was a little hard to read. You like the microwave popcorn thing? Like I love microwave popcorn, but 
like I'm ingesting tox, possibly ingesting toxins into my body when I eat that. So that's the other section that in this book was very, very informative was there's a whole section on toxins and how those toxins can affect your body. Things like parabens, plastics, aluminum, which there's a big shift across the country and across the globe of, you know, going plastic free, going more organic. Um, she makes a very strong argument for buying organic in here. You can take that or leave it. Um, organic is more expensive and with things being more expensive overall in our society today, you know, you just have to do what's best for you and your family and your situation. If you can afford organic, great. Um, but the other things like no plastic, switching to a natural deodorant that doesn't include aluminum, switching to stainless steel cookware, all of those things are like changes that you can make in your home and throughout your lifestyle across, you know, you're not going to do all that overnight. My husband and I were looking at stainless steel cookware. It's like $50 for two pots. That's not really practical right now. And we are hitting ourselves because those would have been great things to ask for for Christmas. So I guess we know what we're asking for next year. So it's just things like that. You are not going to take everything from this book and implement it in one day. You're going to pull from this book and another book and another book or another resource, or another website. And that's okay. As long as you're, the point of this book is just to focus on nutrition. I was very excited for this book. And like I said, it delivered and it hit the mark for me. Um, so I give it a 10 out of 10. I think it's a must read. Like I said, no matter where in the pregnancy journey you are, it's just good information and good research to kind of have at your disposal. Um, and it's a good read. Even if you just rent it and kind of take some notes on a piece of paper or something from the library or whatever, I would highly recommend it. This one will stay on my shelf where I can easily get to it for a long time. So that's it for this one. First book review of 2023. And this was number 13 in my 2022 um, reading list. So that's it. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this book, want any more information on where you can find it or what book you want me to read next time. And until then, I'll see you guys later.